Hello and welcome to the Terran Space Academy. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and help support us on Patreon if you can. We are happy to have you in class today. This class will have a couple important lessons. The first one starts with a question I often hear. People ask why we should spend so much time and resources on space exploration when we have so many problems here on Earth. To answer that question, I will have to take you to the edge of the frontier to a place once called Ultima Thule. But first we need to discuss the reason that we do anything at all. Realism is an approach to life where we try to limit our self-delusions and approach an understanding of the universe with a rational perspective. While setting this goal gets us closer to an understanding of reality, it can also be quite depressing. You are one person out of about 7.7 .7 billion of your species. Our species is one of millions of species on this small planet, circling a not uncommon star, among the 100 billion stars in our galaxy. While our galaxy is one of about 120 billion galaxies in our known universe, if you live in a developed country, there is a good chance you will live about 80 years, if you don't die early, which two out of five people do. This means that of the 13.8 billion year life of our universe, you will experience this percentage of it. Knowing that all of these things are true can make us feel somewhat insignificant. It is understandable that most people focus on their immediate future and try to keep the facts I've just related to you out of their thoughts. On the other hand, despite our seeming insignificance, one person can make a profound difference in the world. The human brain has a hundred billion neurons and up to five trillion support cells which might also take part in some processing. Each neuron has up to 7,000 connections with other neurons. That makes the human brain, along with that of the dolphin and other cetaceans, the most complex structure in the known universe. No two humans have been found to have the exact same neuroanatomy. In fact, there was about an average 10% divergence between any two people scanned at the University of Zurich. This means that of all the Homo sapiens sapiens that have existed on the planet so far, or will ever exist. None will have a brain exactly like yours. Even if you were cloned, your brains would not be the same. This means that another you will never be born on this planet. That makes all of us unique and irreplaceable. And your existence at this point in history, and your place on this planet, gives you the ability to affect the world around you. Some individuals have affected the lives of millions of people, often in destructive ways but sometimes for the better. You may or may not recognize this man. This is Dr. Edward Jenner. We don't have a day set aside to honor him, and I've never seen a statue of him. But between 1980 and today, his work is solely responsible for saving the lives of between 150 and 200 million people. He developed the smallpox vaccine, a disease that wiped out many of our ancestors. Other lesser known people make great contributions also. In fact, 1.2 million years ago, there were no more than 26,000 ancestors of modern humans on this planet, all in what is now modern Africa. At any time, a catastrophe could have wiped them off the planet. These people had hard lives, unimaginable to us now. They could expect to live less than 30 years, before infection, a wild animal, or another human being brought them down. Every one of us is the descendant of smart, capable people. They had to be to survive their time. As scary as our modern world seems, this is the safest time to be alive in the history of humanity. If our ancestors had not been adventurous and brave enough to explore new territories and smart enough to develop new technologies, human beings may not have survived. There are now billions of people on the earth and medical science should be able to greatly extend our lifespan in the next few centuries. If we are not smart enough to develop new technologies, and brave enough to explore unknown territories. Our descendants will not have a better world than we do now. The resources of Earth are finite. We must expand our horizons and look beyond the Earth. Our solar system has eight recognized planets. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Besides the Earth, only Mars would be habitable with our current technology. But what we learned colonizing Mars could open up the rest of the solar system. And around these planets are more than 200 moons, including Earth, 
and also between Mars and Jupiter is an asteroid belt with over 1.9 million asteroids, including the giant Ceres, Vesta, Pallas, and Hygieia. These four worlds make up about half the mass of the entire asteroid belt. And further out, past the orbit of Neptune, is the Kuiper Belt, where we find the beautiful planet Pluto and the even larger Eris. We have found over 70,000 objects past Neptune with a diameter of over 100 kilometers. This is where we find the asteroid known as Arakoth, formerly called Ultima Thule. Arakoth is a Native American name meaning of the sky in the Algonquian language. And that brings me to another lesson. There is another Ultima Thule. Remember that Ultima Thule means a distant place, beyond the known borders, the edge of the frontier. In 1830, many Native Americans still lived in the eastern United States. Some of the tribes had adapted to European technology and had created a written script for their languages, producing newspapers and books. They were farmers for the most part and owned large tracts of Georgia, North Carolina, Alabama, and Mississippi. There were several major tribes in this area called the Five Civilized Tribes. These were the Creek, Seminole, Chickasaw, Cherokee, and Choctaw Indians. The Choctaw lived mostly in what is now Mississippi. The President of the United States at that time, Andrew Jackson, knew that these tribes owned a lot of valuable farmland. He decided it would be a good idea to have the U.S. Army take the land by force. He would then be able to offer this land to his supporters. The Choctaw were the first to be removed. Now the Choctaw had fought beside the American colonists during the War of Independence and were supposed to be considered American citizens, according to Article 14 of the treaty the Choctaw had signed with the American government. But anyone who knows American history knows that whether or not your rights are protected is inversely proportional to the amount of melanin in your skin. In fact, the United States government has never fully honored any treaty with the Native Americans. When the army came upon the Choctaw villages, they rounded up everyone, refusing to let them harvest food for the journey or take any belongings they could not carry. The Choctaw were told they would be marched over into Arkansas to live, but this was a lie. The army feared the Choctaw might try to return and decided to march them all the way across to Arkansas to what was then considered wilderness, but is now known as the state of Oklahoma. 15,000 men, women, and children were marched on foot this entire distance. 25% of them died along the way. And it is said that those too slow to keep up were executed. Most of the tribal elders did not make it. The Arkansas Gazette newspaper reported after seeing so many bodies that the trek was a trail of tears and death. And that brings us back to Ultima Thule. To prepare this video for you, I went to Ultima Thule. Not this one, but this one. This is the last point in Arkansas where the soldiers marched the Choctaw and forced them into Oklahoma. The soldiers set up a camp and stayed for a while to keep them from returning. One of the soldiers was a learned man, or perhaps one of the priests accompanying them was Catholic and knew his Latin. They called the camp Ultima Thule, the last stop for so many. Over time, a trading post was built to supply the soldiers in 1833 by Joseph W. McKean, and then a town rose. The town of Ultima Thule was recognized from 1836 to about 1907 when it is said that a tornado wiped it out. Now there is nothing left of the town but this old cemetery, on private land now. But a kind gentleman showed me the way to it. Here are the headstones of the people of Ultima Thule. Here is Joseph McKean, the founder. And here is an incredibly sad one. Those were hard times back then, for everyone. But one of my ancestors' bones would not be found in this cemetery. They would litter the trail back to Mississippi. Except for one. I don't know anything about her, except that her English name might have been Sarah. I do know that she made it through the long walk to the deserts of Oklahoma to eventually give me a chance to live my life and see starships built for a new frontier being tested in America. In each of our lives, we will be faced with our own long walk hopefully not as perilous as hers, how far are we willing to go to give our descendants a chance at a better life? That is why we should expend more resources on space and less on war. Because in the end, 
the place where we finish our journey, is where our children start theirs. This Ultima Thule is long forgotten by almost everyone, but this one may one day be the last stop for our descendants as they leave for the stars. When our children reach Ultima Thule again, I hope we will have progressed to a better understanding of people. While there is much of humanity that I love, there are some aspects of human nature that I hope we can leave behind as we make our way to the farthest point of the new frontier.